protein. Now, one of the areas that we work on, of course, are the sirtuins. These are enzymes that our bodies make. There are seven of them in most of our cells. And they're very important for fighting against diseases, both chronic diabetes, heart disease, Alzheimer's, we believe, based on a lot of mouse and human uh, genetic studies. Uh, but they also, we're finding, are important for viral defenses. And we put forward a, an hypothesis in this uh, paper that the sirtuin uh, defenses are, are lost during COVID-19 infections. And one of the reasons for that is the following. So sirtuins need NAD. And unfortunately, as we get older, we think that a lot of our cells lose the ability to make NAD effectively, and they also destroy it for reasons that we don't fully understand yet. But what we've also discovered in my lab and in others, uh, Charlie Brenner uh, put out a, a nice paper about this, is that the virus, coronavirus and other types of viruses, deplete NAD in cells. And we think this is part of their, their defense, the viral attack and the inability of cells to survive the attack. Now, they do this through activation of the PARPs. PARPs are poly-ADP ribosyl trans, uh, polymerases. So they do this by activating the PARPs, such as PARP1, PARP12, PARP14. And PARPs are enzymes that polymerize NAD and deplete it from the cell. And we think that by either blocking the PARP activity or replacing, replenishing the NAD levels in infected cells and in the body of patients, we can give them a better chance of survival. Now, why would we worry about NAD and sirtuins? Well, sirtuins, particularly sirtuin-6, sirtuin-1, and sirtuin-2, they control inflammation and they dampen it when it's overactive. I mentioned the inflammasome. Well, one of the key components of the inflammasome is called NLRP3. And the acetylation, chemical addition to that protein is what causes it uh, to be active. Um, and actually, if we deacetylate of enzymes like SIRT1 and SIRT2, deacetylate NLRP3, it brings that activity uh, down. And so what we're thinking is that when cells are infected, the NAD levels go down. Sirtuins are unable to dampen the inflammatory response and you get this cytokine storm. So in other words, if we were to raise NAD levels in patients, we may be able to prevent their bodies from going into this state of shock and a septic-like response. Now, I will admit, at first I didn't think this was something that I should rush into. Of course, I, I would look like somebody with a hammer looking for a nail because you'd think that everything that I do looks like an NAD problem. But studies like the Brenner paper that came out, as well as studies over the last five years in my lab that have looked at NAD changes during macrophage activation and the PARP response have really pushed me into the belief that, as I write in this article with my co-authors, that NAD is part of this story. Now, it's not the whole story. In fact, the NAD story in this paper is only a, a small part of it, about 5%. But I want to talk about it because a lot of people are asking me, David, what about NAD? And interestingly, I've been working with a team uh, in Boston on making an NAD precursor a drug. And so for the last two years, with the help of a great team at Brigham and Women's Hospital, they've been testing the safety and efficacy of uh, an NAD precursor called MIB626, uh, which is a proprietary version of an NAD booster, is that so far the molecule is extremely safe in the people that have been tested. It's able to greatly raise NAD levels. 